Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Taylor Sotoborg and I'm the medical director with Tiny Health. In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through the gut health report of an adult microbiome. And this is also applicable for children because we actually achieve our more stable adult-like microbiome between ages three and five. However, for our child test, our action plans are tailored for that age group specifically. So you know the recommendations you are getting are appropriate for the age, specific age of the person that you're testing. So a common question we get asked at Tiny Health is whether the adult or older child microbiome can be changed. And I am here to tell you that with dedicated actions tailored specifically to that person's need, the adult and child microbiomes can absolutely be optimized. And it's very important to check in on the microbiome for children and, and adults because this can identify potential triggers for symptoms that are being experienced. And for adults, because there's fascinating research coming out that's demonstrating more and more evidence that the microbiome is involved in longevity and having a healthy microbiome need, means not only helping to support someone's lifespan, but more importantly, their health span. So taking steps to ensure that all our years are as healthy as they can be. So Tiny Health is a great way to check in on the microbiome because we use a technology called shotgun metagenomics. So while other tests prior to Tiny Health use something called PCR, shotgun metagenomics is now the gold standard for microbiome research, meaning that you are getting all the most up-to-date insights from the most recent research available with shotgun metagenomics. And so we can tell you not only who is in the microbiome at very, very accurate levels, we can also tell you the function of those microbes. So all this means we can tell you who's there and how well they're doing their jobs. And this is important because the adult and child gut has a lot of jobs to do. So if we go to this microbiome breakdown, uh, I can show you that if we click in here, we can see all these species detected all the way down to 0.05% of the microbiome. And there's a lot of them, and that's great because the adult microbiome is ideally very diverse, but how can we be sure that this collection of microbes are good or not so good, or if they need to be adjusted? So Tiny Health is taking out the guesswork by breaking down all of these microbes detected into meaningful categories. So we're gonna review what categories and insights are most insightful for those with adult and child microbiomes. So let's dive into how Tiny Health can help identify imbalances. So perhaps the most obvious type of imbalance would be those overabundant disruptive microbes. So here we can see in this individual, they have high levels of unfriendly opportunistic pathogens. And this can contribute to gut inflammation and potentially trigger the immune system causing systemic symptoms or worsening systemic symptoms. And getting these in check can be very helpful for optimizing someone's health, especially if they're struggling with inflammatory conditions. So we can look in here and see how far above this person is from an ideal range, as well as all the related action items to help get this metric in check. So also in this section, we can see if this person has any parasites or infection microbes detected. We can also see if there's an overabundance of species like M. smithy, which are methane producers. And while tiny health tests are not diagnostic or therapeutic, this can, if something like this is detected, it can be incredibly helpful for determining best next steps for an individual to follow up with their practitioner. So interestingly, in this section, we can also follow up on antibiotic exposure and see if there's any lingering evidence of a prior disruption from this type of medication. So here we can see that this person's abundance index is in the needing support area, meaning they have a high amount of antibiotic resistant microbes. And we also see that their richness index is quite high, meaning there's a lot of different species that are resistant to antibiotics. This metric often takes a little bit longer after antibiotic exposure to recover, but it's important to check in to see that the gut has gone back to a healthy baseline. So in this case, the tiny health report is critical for identifying these less than ideal microbes that are in this person's gut and providing actions to help address these. And we can also see related to this in the gut inflammations marker section that these microbes are con contributing to a hexa LPS index. So our indexes are very interesting because they are made up from not only the number of different species that are LPS producing, which is pro-inflammatory, this index also takes into consideration the functional 
microbiome components. So what is the amount of genes in the microbiome that's dedicating to making LPS? And it's not always just the species that are listed. So this metric bringing together both abundance and function, which is only possible with shotgun metagenomics, is the most insightful way to understand if there's gut inflammation. And so we do this for hexa LPS, mucus degradation, hydrogen sulfide, which is in range for this person, those other two metrics. All right, another important aspect of addressing imbalances is to look at the beneficial microbes that should be there, because these can be just as important to assess as the disruptive or unfriendly microbes. And so we see that this person does not have ideal levels of one of the most important types of beneficial microbes, bifidobacterium. Bifidobacterium helps keep the gut at a pH that makes it harder for unfriendly microbes to colonize. So this is a particularly important area for this individual to focus on. And here we, we provide specific probiotic and prebiotic recommendations to help provide these microbes that are at lower levels than ideal and the prebiotics that can help make those more effective and more likely to colonize. We also see here though, that there are some good things happening. For example, this person does have some acromancia present. Uh, this is a microbe that's missing in a lot of adults and it's related to metabolic health. We also see that this person does have a good amount of Focalibacterium, which is an important anti-inflammatory family of microbes. So getting this level of information about the beneficial microbes helps this individual to know what type of probiotics are the most beneficial for them to focus on. All right, next I wanna highlight how Tiny Health can help people understand their gut microbiome's ability to perform digestion and absorption. So this is a set of metrics that's again, only possible because we use shotgun metagenomics technology. And that's because this technology sequences all the microbes in the microbiome. And so we can look at all that genetic information and determine how much of it is dedicated to performing a certain function, regardless of which microbe it's coming from. So we can see the ability of the gut to digest different complex sugars and to digest different types of fibers. And so here we provide extremely personalized dietary recommendations to help support this person's gut the most. So for example, this individual should focus on eating a higher variety and a higher quantity of foods that are rich in resistant starch. If we supply by increasing these foods, the microbiome will increase the microbes that perform these functions and help to boost overall diversity. Now, speaking of diversity and balance and robustness, we can see that diversity here is, you know, in an okay spot for this person. Diversity is one of the most important metrics for gut health in the adult. But here, by taking the recommended actions, we can continue to promote diversity and shift that diversity towards a population that's made up of more beneficial microbes. So here we can see in the action plan that for each set of results, we provide a highly personalized action plan comprised of supplements, lifestyle, and dietary actions for that individual to best support their microbiome's needs and optimize their gut health. So if we click into something like the bifidobacterium probiotic, we provide some recommended products, prebiotics, and in the foods, we can see that we provide very specific food recommendations as well, as well as some supplements where they are appropriate. And lastly, we also have a huge resource of educational material and recommendations for optimizing and maintaining microbiome health. So we have our whole set of guides. So a common question we get is about mycotoxins and exposure to molds. And then in the action plan, we have a whole section that's dedicated just for micro, general microbiome health and understanding ways that you can live your life and support your gut. And for those who work with patients, we do have a practitioner program where people can become trained on using our tests with their patients. So in summary, there's not a one size fits all approach to gut health and understanding your specific gut community through a microbiome test can help you take very targeted actions to address imbalances potentially alleviate symptoms and leading to overall improved gut health and well-being.